What is up, guys? It's the Sound Alchemist, and once again, I am joined by Gersh One, the one, the only. And today, we're back at it, answering your questions in another spine tingling ASMR like for the greater. <laughs> this is a video series where you ask us questions and we answer them, but make sure to put a question in front of your question because we get those questions first. first. And that is what Ersa Swan did. He asks, or she asks, while playing with another friend, it came up. Can, whoa. Uh, can starships in the warp collide with other ships that are stuck or abandoned in the warp? Yeah, ships can dock with one another. Yeah. Um, but one ship has to have a little extra. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You can't have two um, clean cut ships. There you go. <laughs> One's going to have a psychic hood of some sorts, a Geller field, if you will. Yeah. A really thick and flexible <laughs> mm -hmm. Geller field. Um, I think it happened in the Magnus versus the, no, 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 the Siege of Terra, the second Siege of Terra had happened where like Gilliman and his forces were traveling through the warp, um, and then they collided with some, uh, chaos fleets and that's when, yeah, explosions happened and Geller fields exploded and, but eventually they did get to Terra. Yeah. Uh, so yes, it can happen. I can just imagine Gilliman being like, we are traveling through the warp on our favorite rocket ship, going, going through the Immaterium, Sons of Gilliman. Actually, that would be really good, because the, don't they talk about the moon in that song? Something like that. Yeah, and then they end up landing on the moon. Mm -hmm. Or is it coming out of the moon? Yeah, that's after he beat Magnus. Right. Yeah. Um, what else? I think that's it. Because <laughs> there was something else that I was going to say. Um, there have been instances where like ships like crash into one another, but since it's the warp, they kind of just like fuse, and it's like this weird amalgamation of like I don't demon know. ships now. Yeah, because it's like it's like that one painting where it's like you go up the stairs and you come out the bottom, and there's like people upside down and the you know, Escher ones. Yeah, tu sabe. Oh yeah, <laughs> Maluma baby, <laughs> just like that. What if I don't know? Oh, tu sabe, tu oh, sabe. Another thing too is remember that there's warp routes. They're very specific warp routes. So kind of like in Halo, where like the routes purpose or roots, or roots. Uh, you know, like a like a ooh the webway. Mm. It's very similar to Halo, where like the Halo rings aren't weren't they supposed to be wormholes basically? I thought they were. Well, I guess yeah, but at the same time they're also used as like a device to weapons. Yeah, yeah, but like it's it's in that situation. So like certain planets, like Vigilus. That was a very key planet because it was right next to a warp route that was relatively safe, and it was well it was it was traveled by a lot of planets or ships. So that is why um, that was so important. Mm -hmm. So I'm guessing you know traffic and ship. Yeah, mostly the second part. And ship. Spritzy, why does it hurt when I pee? Two reasons. Uh, you're not getting enough water inside. Like you're not drinking enough water. Or you're pushing out kidney stones. Right. And if if that's the case, I'm sorry. Yeah, why are you eating kids? Because, like, the knee is the part that doesn't digest well. So, like, your body trying to push the kid's knee stone out, it's like, nah. So what you're saying is don't eat kids' knees. Right. Gotcha. <laughs> Gross. Uh, this one is by Tin Man 40 k When... When there are Xenos who worship the four chaos gods and use warp magic, and also summon demons, who does the Imperium call? The Grey Knights or the Death Watch? The Ghostbusters. Yeah, of course. I mean, well, which one? Because didn't they, like, reboot it? Uh, I don't know what the... Oh, yeah, the girl one that nobody liked, right? Yeah, I heard it was really... Well, I don't know. I never watched it, but I heard it was bad. What and now they're, like, rebooting that reboot. So that's not out yet? <laughs> no. Because, oh, okay. uh... Nurgle's COVID got it. Mm. He's like, I want to watch this. Y'all got to wait. Yeah, because them kids. Mm -hmm. Got to eat them knees. They're great. Uh, what's his question? Uh, okay, so who goes and fights Xenos that summons like demons and stuff? Grey Knights or Death Watch? Oh, well, Death Watch is Xenos. Oh, wait. Ooh, that's... <laughs> you just blew our minds. Um, it depends on who gets there first. Even though I do think that Grey Knights are more of a specialist mm -hmm. uh, thing. I think the Grey Knights would come if the demon incursion got out of, out of like, control. and if started got like, really hard and yeah. got up. Mm -hmm. that's, that's when they would come. Yeah. <laughs> I think it'd, it'd be Death Watch first, then if that got out of control, then the Grey Knights. Yeah. Um, 
this next question comes from the theater 22 do you guys watch luton's videos uh no but i have a friend who does and he's always talking about how we should listen to them yeah mm-hmm. eventually yeah they're really long i know that mm-hmm. james baird are there any xeno factions that have good relationships like trade and assistance in troubled times uh, i assume with like the imperium uh wait say that again are there any xeno factions that have good relations like trade and assistance in troubled times gotcha um not with the imperium mm-hmm. well at least not with like the the imperium when you think about it because they could be making like secret deals with like planetary governors and such rogue traders stuff like that high yeah. lords and you, and most of the time it would be eldar or um tau right that do that um and sometimes even like the tau empire would fake uh, like neediness <laughs> in order for them to be like oh because you know how like that whole, whole saying like oh if you want to make somebody your friend ask them for a favor or if you want to get close to somebody asking for a favor right because then that tricks their mind stuff like that i'm pretty sure the uh water cast does that mm-hmm. they usually go up to like high lords and planetary governors rogue traders and they're like step bro no <laughs> <laughs> i'm stuck <laughs> um yeah um <clears throat> this one's by nico tuggis which loyalist Primarch or Primarchs would you guys like to see return? And what effect would it have in the Imperium, in your opinion? Ferris Manus. Yeah. And Sang... Well, I'll say it. Sanguinius. I hate Sanguinius. <laughs> I, I don't like that either. Um, why Ferris Manus? Because I want him to come back as a Dreadnought. Mm-hmm. Or like some type of like cool clone. Yeah. So it's just like... Ferris Manus, but with sunglasses? Exactly. <laughs> and what do you think his uh, return would have on the Imperium? I think um, he would. The Imperium would like it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this guy's cool. Yeah. No, I think it would be one of those situations like Gilliman, where like he goes, "Okay, I'm gonna go do my own thing now. I'm gonna get my boys, the Iron Hands, and their successor chapters, and we are gonna go do our thing." We're gonna talk about how flesh is not weak. Yeah, I guess it would be interesting because it would either empower the Adeptus Mechanicus or cause friction to the point where like the High Lords would be raising their eyebrows and being like, "Why is?" Why is Ferris Man is this Primarch being so close to the Adeptus Mechanicus, who is mm-hmm. supposed to be independent? They worship something that's not really the, the god, emperor, the Omnissiah. So mm-hmm. I think that's the impact. Yeah. I don't want Sanguinius to return, but in a way I don't. Uh, but his return would mean a new model. Um, but I want him to return in a badass way, just like this guy said. But instead of sunglasses, he's now like the Primarch of the Legion of the Damned. And he has a beard. Because mm-hmm. if you have something that's so hot... And then you put a beard on it. It becomes hotter. Oh, Santa. Gal Gadot. <laughs> um, uh, this question comes from Cody Stahl. What are each Chaos God's relationship to each other? Who hates who? Well, I think the biggest rivalry is Korn and Slanesh. And then after that, uh, they all kind of just bicker and fight. Um, but I don't think Zinch has any beef with any other... Nah, I mean, unless they get into his plans, but everybody really hates everybody. Yeah. It's well, like everybody hates Chris, but it's like everybody hates the Chaos Gods. And Chris, well, I would say Korn is Chris. Mm. Because if you think about it, um, Slanesh and Korn hate each other because that's what the books say. But also, Zinch is all magic. And um, Korn is, he hates that. Uh, so he has beef with all, both of them. So Everybody hates Chris. Korn. Um, Edward Mason, do you guys think that the Primarch of the Raven Guard, Corvus Corax, is still alive in the warp and may one day return to the Imperium of Man? For sure. Um, my, th- my way of thinking is if they don't outright say that they're dead and show them dying, they're not dead. And even if they do, they can always retcon it like Sanguinius. Um, but yeah, I still think Corvus Corax is alive. Um, and I still think that he's going to make some type of appearance or an impact uh, when he returns. Yeah, whenever GW needs money, mm-hmm. which is probably going to be... Well, I don't need... I th- GW's doing good, especially because the Indominus box set like sold out mm-hmm. right away. And then all those extra boxes that people bought that ended up being like, oh, no, it's just an extra box you have. That's very sneaky of you, GW. <laughs> um, but yeah. Next question. 
This one again from Cody Stahl. Have you guys ever considered doing a D&D campaign set in the 40k universe? Also, how fucking awesome would that be? I weigh. <laughs> yeah, I have. <laughs> we kind of did one, right? Yeah. But I, I think it would be cool to revisit it and just say, like, no, this is the 40k universe. And instead of saying, like, magic powers, you just call it um, uh, warp powers. Mm-hmm. Ooh, that could be interesting because you could flavor. It's gonna take a lot of work, but you could flavor each individual like magic attack or spell as uh, being empowered by the chaos gods. Yeah. So like Tasha's hideous laughter, it could be like Slanesh powering it. Yeah, or even if you don't want to put in all that work, you could also just say like, just keep in mind that these individuals that you guys are playing can use these magical powers because you guys are psychers or unsanctioned psychers but understand that you don't really know why this is happening so you don't have to explain like oh this this comes from corn this comes from blink it's just like these are powers that you have Mm -hmm. and then later on you discover it was the chaos gods all along siempre (laughs) yes (laughs) next question comes from anthony muth 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 what do you guys think of text to speech? It's funny. Yeah, I've watched clips, and I said I was gonna watch the whole thing like a year ago. Never got around to it. Yeah, and it's still going on, right? Mm-hmm. Din Tran, is there anything in Warhammer 40k that doesn't make sense to you or needs more clarification? Yeah, a really big one, and that is uh, perpetual. Why? How? When? Arroz con pollo. You know, sepo que. <laughs> that's yeah. that's what I want. All those questions answered. All at once. Mm-hmm. And you want them to connect. Please. You have major characters that are perpetuals. Characters that are perpetuals that literally influenced the Horus heresy. And you don't get any explanation as to how they came about. What, like, what are the limitations of being a perpetual? At what point do you stop being one? How can you transfer your perpetualness to somebody else? Yeah. And it's like, nah, they don't want to tell us. Which is cool. I like mystery and like a lot of things. But at the same time, I think we should know these things because they're pretty important to the story overall. Yeah. I think uh, it would be nice to know more about the ethereals. Yeah. It would be cool. Mm-hmm. But Not- I think I think that that will be answered. Well, I think perpetualness won't be for some reason. Yeah, because I think that's one of those things that somebody wrote at some point and they were like, how does this make any sense? I don't know. Just put it in the book. All right. (laughs) Yeah. Jamie Garth. How awesome is bacon? I think we touched on this before, right? Yeah. If I had a rating of one to five, I would put bacon at like a 3.5. Yeah. Younger me would have said a 10. Me right now is probably like a six. Mm Mm-hmm. But it depends on what kind of bacon, too. There's different types of bacon. Mm-hmm. Like turkey bacon, uh, hog bacon, swine bacon, swine bacon. pork bacon. The only pig. time the, the only time I've ever tasted a bacon that's like, whoa, this, this kind of tastes like bacon, uh, I ordered a cocktail with, like, a bacon strip, and it was, like, a honey glazed mm-hmm. something. That was pretty good. That bacon was, like, it was bacon... But it was honey, and then it had whiskey, and it was like, whoa. I liked it. Yeah, at first I was going to say, because you said how awesome is bacon. I'm like, yeah, I've actually learned to bake, and I'm pretty good at it. Like making your own bread, your own cakes. Bacon's pretty cool. Yeah. Bacon is one of those things, though, that if you don't follow the recipe, you end up getting mad at your miniatures and you throw them at the wall. Mm-hmm. Or you put the miniature inside whatever you're baking. That's true. I was at uh, Michael's the other day, and I went into the bacon aisle, and um, they have like little molds um, or they have like this plastic jelly that you heat up in the microwave and then you can make molds. So you can basically, you know, uh, cook something with a certain design. We should try to do like recasts of miniatures, but made out of chocolate Ooh. with that thing. That'd be badass. Mm-hmm. I thought you were going somewhere else with it, but sure. Yeah, well, I mean, because <laughs> it's really hot. I mean, that's why you got to do it. No, sometimes sometimes the hot is okay. I mean, wax. Oh, but on there? Ugh. Inside of there? Ooh, imagine if it gets inside. Whew. It's going to come out looking like a like a anthill. 
Because, you know, when, like, people oh. pour, like, the metal inside the ant hills and they pull it out and it's all, like, squiggly. Yeah, that's gross. How, that's how my urethra is. <laughs> it's different pockets. Because mm-hmm. some, t- some of it stores pee, some of it stores something else. So mm-hmm. it's, like, I squeeze one way and the pocket, like, shuts. and it... So your, your urethra is connected to your balls. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, how would the pee? Yeah, yeah, that's where the pee is stored. Right. Because, um... yeah. like, the neck bone's connected to the leg bone. Right. Um, Ty Shingleton. <laughs> Obviously, GW needs to keep fresh models in rotation, but with the Imperial technology declining, how will they introduce new models that aren't just STCs or old tech? Well, they did it with the Imper- uh, with the, the Primaris, Primaris Marines. Yeah. They did it with the uh, Adeptus Mechanicus. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, they just come up with like random things that don't feel right, but you just go, okay, <laughs> cool. Yeah. Uh, Belisarius Call has been around for 10,000 years. Okay, sure. Yeah, He was got, never a fabricator general. Okay. <laughs> right. He's got, like, surrogate bodies, and he's really only just a brain. Yeah. Okay. I've got just a brain. Mm-hmm. Uh, this question comes from Elliot Figaria. Has anyone ever tried to map the warp? Uh, nope. That's like trying to map my urethra. It's impossible. Unless you get something that's really, really hot, and then you put it down <laughs> through the eye of terror. Mm-hmm. Next question. <laughs> is that what you're going to call your urethra from now on? Your eye of terror? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the warp is impossible to track, to pinpoint, to map, because it's ever-changing, ever-flowing, always has been and never was. Even the Gardens of Nurgle, mm-hmm. the Palace of Zinch, it's constantly changing. Yeah. Hopefully that's a little better than no, unless you <laughs> pour something hot on it. Yeah. Uh, next question. Uh, oh, we already did that one. We did that one as well. I have one from. Nope, we did that one. Ty Shingleton, what has been a few of your favorite questions to answer? The anatomy ones are always fun. Those are always fun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think whenever you guys ask about orcs, I think I like it just because I know so much about orcs and I can finally use that knowledge instead of just like trying to tell my friends and then my <laughs> friends kind of zoning out. Mm-hmm. Well, but I'm pretty sure you guys are zoning out too. Half of you guys are painting right now. What's the other half doing? Well, we don't want to talk trying about Trying to that. map the warp. <laughs> map their eye of terror. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that'd be crazy. There, it has to be a thing, right? Like if you're on the internet, somebody at some point out there is wanking it to you right now mm-hmm. it might just be me right now i mean because this was past me that's true that's crazy mm-hmm. <laughs> good question though very uh, eye-opening it was an eye to that window this question comes from neon pants guy one uh three ratlings versus versus one skaven who wins the three ratlings or oh, well Hmm. Mm, I would say, yeah, I'd say three ratlings. Yeah, that's... Because they have guns, and, <laughs> and skavens don't. Yeah, because ratlings are essentially like hobbits. With sharpshooting abilities. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And a, a, a skaven is just a rat. Yeah. Like a master splinter. But a really evil rat. Mm-hmm. Uh, this next question comes <laughs> from... <laughs> really evil rat. <laughs> Elias Ravanetti. Would you guys rather fight a swarm of rippers or a swarm of squigs? Um, squigs, because that sounds fun. Yeah, if squigs are stupid, because orcs are stupid, so I think it would be easier to trick the squigs than the swarm of rippers. The rippers would just want to consume you. Yeah, they're like piranhas on land. Yeah. <laughs> squigs are like puppies that their bites actually hurt. Right, yep. And they're balls. You can kick them. That's like a design flaw that nobody ever thought of. What's up with the old ones now? Uh, but yeah, those were the questions for today. If you guys have more questions to, for us, please comment down below. Uh, thanks for listening, guys. Yeah, and as always, this is Gershwan and the Sound Alchemist. And remember, kick your squigs. <laughs>